Now, you mentioned earlier choosing between forward or backward placement of the appliance. This is obviously a huge matter of controversy in the MARPI world where you have one school of thought that you know any, any forward placement of the appliance is catastrophic. It's going to lead to this conical expansion that doesn't confer any you know, nasal airway benefit. Uh, and yet, MARPIs have become more forwardly placed because the bone is thicker up front. You're more likely to get an actual split. What, how, what, what are your thoughts on that sort of debate? And what does Facegenics think about that? And how do they factor the AP into their appliance design? For sure. Yeah, I won't speak for them, but, but I'll, I'll give you an idea of how I think about this. Uh, so when, when you're talking about expansion and what's going to happen with the bones, it's always a formula of what anchorage do you have and where's the resistance, right? So the anchorage is, is, is very similar. You have access to TADS, right? So that's hooked to the bone and you have access to teeth. If you do a custom MARPI, you can incorporate teeth. The teeth have roots, the roots hook to the bone. So those are your anchorage system. The worse or the less anchorage you have from your TADS, if you're attached to the teeth, the more force is going to be applied to them. So when I think about expansion, the number one most important thing for me is to get sufficient, if not extra anchorage. It's almost like you can never have too much anchorage. So I do err on the side of engaging as much bone as possible and, and really having more TADS versus less TADS. Uh, there is a level of predictability that comes with good anchorage that you lose when you don't have good anchorage. And so from my standpoint, if the anchorage is better in the front, then I'm absolutely going to engage that bone. And oftentimes it is. Uh, the, the bone is thicker, you can use longer tads. But that doesn't uh, detract from the importance of the posterior anchorage as well. So ideally, you're engaging all of those bones, in my opinion. And if anything, that may be one shortcoming of the FME, because at least as it's in its current state, it, it is a fixed appliance. So there's three versions of it, but the TADs only come out of the appliance in one way and the length of that body is, is fixed. And so it's gonna go in one place. It can be more forward, it can be more back. Uh, the FME cases that I have going are kind of in the middle, if not maybe a little bit more toward the back. So the question is, is that anchorage going to be sufficient due to all the other technology we already talked about to overcome the resistance forces in a predictable way? Who decides whether the appliance is placed more forward or more back. Is that you or is Ultimately, that Facegenics? Ultimately, it's the doctor. Ultimately, it's the doctor. Now, Facegenics is going to give you their recommendations, right? So this is something that they've looked into a lot and, and they're looking at the bone in three dimensions and they have their whole workup that they do. But at the end of the day, they're going to send it back to you, know, you, the doctor, to make the final decision and say, hey, is this where I want it or do you want to move it for some reason? Right. And do you agree with the, the criticism of interiorly placed MARPIs that that they always lead to cone-shaped expansions that are not as parallel and that have more expansion up front toward the, toward the front of the mouth where you get a bigger diastema, a bigger opening at the front of the nose, but not as much expansion in the back? Yeah. Or is that a kind of, is that a goblin that is overplayed in terms of critiques of MARPI? Well, probably yes and yes. So I do think it's a goblin that's overplayed, meaning that you know some people place a lot of importance thinking like, oh, well, if you just don't do this, then this is never gonna happen to you. And, and I don't believe that. You know, Like I say, it's always a, a function of the resistance. So depending on the patient's bone density, where their maxilla connects to their zygoma, there's a lot of factors at play that are going to determine how parallel your expansion is. Uh, but I also do believe that the more forward you place your anchorage, specifically if you don't have as much anchorage in the back or you don't reduce the resistance in that back area, meaning you want the midline palate to split. So, you know, whether it's a piezotome osteotomy or whatever you might want to do in order to get that, if you're reducing the resistance in the back, as soon as the two halves of the maxilla separate, then you everything else has to bend. And so at that point, you have control to some extent, and, and you're not worried about the anterior posterior expansion anymore because you've gotten a clean split down the middle. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now the argument comes up, well, what about the pterygoid plates? And you know, there's all these different things. And, and long story short, I've never seen convincing research that shows me, hey, if you do it this exact way, you're going to get parallel expansion every time. And I've seen a number of cases, both my own and other docs who, you know, they have posterior anchorage and they got, you know, more triangular expansion and they had anterior uh, anchorage and they got more parallel expansion. 
So, so I'm not convinced at this point that it's it's as hard and fast as some people make it seem. Mm-hmm. 